All right, so some, something you may have noticed, right, is that when you signed up for this course, right, um, there is a three in front of it, right, which indicates that this is a, uh, you know, a junior level class. So the expectations that I have as an instructor are going to be kind of commiserate for that because I've you know, kind of expected that you've taken classes before, which I'm sure all of you have. And then if you want to proceed in the course, right, I also know that, you know, students need a C minus or better to move into the main major, right? That, that is an expectation requirement. So, you know, what does that mean exactly, right? So, so I know some of you have transferred in, some of you have taken other classes, some of you have not had me before, although I do recognize some names from uh, my intro class this past fall of taking me. Uh, I don't know if that's doom or uh, doom and gloom, or maybe it's joyful, who knows? Uh, so let me go over a few expectations, right, because of that. So whether you watch the online lectures or whether you, you know, intend in person when we do that again, there's an expectation that I have, right? And that is, is that students have read the material before class, right? In the past, right, I've had a history of students who, you know, like don't read um, or they'll read after the fact or they don't read at all into, uh, you know, until the last minute, right? Or they try to guess the kind of answers. They aren't keeping up with the material. And what ends up happening is that they, they don't tend to perform very well in the course, right? Um, and that's mainly because they aren't reading, you know, and I get it, right? A lot of times, right, a lot of stuff is dry. You know, it doesn't really make a lot of sense, right? And you kind of have this expectation that you can get by, um, you know, on lectures and stuff. And that may be true for certain classes that you've taken. Um, that was certainly true for me for certain, certain classes when I was an undergrad where you could just like not read, show up, and you'd be fine. Um, it doesn't work like that in this class. Um, I think, you know, if you are interested in your own your success in this class and the success in like life and other classes, right, you're going to get a lot further ahead if you buckle down and read. There is a lot of reading, right? And that is for a lot of reasons, right? One, it's important to have different voices to, because a lot of the concepts in here are very, you know, abstract. They're very, like, it's hard to, like, think about them, right? So by giving you a lot of different ways to read and see how other people see it, um, you know, that's, that's a way to maybe, like, simplify it, right? It's a lot. Yeah, you're right. Um, you know, but it's not anything that I don't think you could handle, right? Like, you know, I, like... I don't think it's unreasonable for what I have. The other part too, right, is that uh, when we start talking about the final paper, right, all the assignments in here are sources that you can use to write the final paper. And so it's not anything that I think is that you, you know, should be unable to do or you're incapable of doing, right? So I'm helping giving you a starting guideline to help write your paper, right? So use it as a resource. Use it as something that you can, um, you know, change and feel better about. And, you know, like you should be, you should be good, good to go, right? You're going to start facing troubles, though, if you start slacking your reading, or if you start getting discouraged, if you start not doing that, or you, you know, maybe you just, you're, you have a lot of anxiety and you just don't want to read for some reason, right? I understand those feelings. I experienced them myself. Uh, and I can guarantee you that I've been, I've been, I went to school a lot longer than all of you have and probably will ever go to. I don't, it's not a flex, so it's a lot of pain. So, I mean, I'm not like bragging, right? I'm just saying like, I do get it because I've <laughs> lived it a lot. It, it, as much as it sucks, it's something you have to do, right? The other part that ends up happening too is that, you know, like I also understand like, you know, the urge to wait until the last minute to work on assignments. Again, something that I did, right? You know, for a lot of them. And for a lot of them, you could get away with, right? Um, and that's not this course, right? Time and time again, I often see students who, you know, have shoddy work and then they like, they wait until the last minute to do it. And then either get frustrated at me when I grade them for the grade for what they turned in, right? And there's a difference between me being tough and then also me like evaluating what's presented for me. And those are two different things. Um, some of me, you know, I have a reputation of being tough, right? And, and may, perhaps I am, right? I don't just like give points because you wrote something on a piece of paper. You're right, I don't do that. Um, but I have expectations that I know you guys can do if you choose to do it. So keep that in mind, right? I'm not saying that to be rude. I'm not saying that to be intimidating. I'm not trying to set that as a tone, but you should know that like, you know, this paper that we all signed, something you have to do in each section of uh, theories, 
It's something that we've all discussed very candidly about and tried to set reasonable expectations of. More time on setting this expectation for this paper um, than you might think. The good news is, is that the paper is broken up into segments in my class, so you have a chance to work on it all the way through and get feedback. Interesting point. Um, students don't read feedback, and then they get mad when they don't address the things that I tell them to fix um, and stuff like that. And I think there's also a point where people look at my feedback where I give them direct feedback. I'm a direct communicator, right? And some people don't like that. They don't, they want more fluffy kind of language. They want, uh, you know, to really be like gassed up all the time. And I just tell you like, like it is, right? It's not intended to be rude. It's not intended to be harmful. I'm just telling you like, hey, you know, this needs some work, you need to fix this or you gotta change or whatever, right? I've, you know, I've never told anyone like, hey, this paper sucks. It's like, I don't do stuff like that. But, you know, I'm gonna tell you if like, you know, it's just not up to, up to, up to snuff, right? So I would encourage you that if I tell you to fix something, to actually fix it and then not get mad at me for telling you to fix something because I'm telling you and giving you the tools to fix your paper for the final paper. And then it's on you if you fix it or not. At that point, it's not, it's none of my concern. But don't get mad at me for helping you, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Point being right is that, you know, if you want to have long-term success in the class, a lot of times students struggle because they didn't put in the work and I get it, you're, you're juggling a lot of responsibilities outside, right? Because you're working, you're, you know, trying to pay rent. You know, I've had students who've experienced homelessness in the middle of the you know, trying to, you know, like, live and not, like, die, right, out on the streets or something like that. Um, so, like, it, those things happen, right? Side note, if something like homelessness or something like that's having, like, some, like, real life stuff is happening that's really serious, um, please contact me. We'll work something out, right? You know, and I'm also in a position, right, uh, I'm not like this heartless like bastard. Um, you know, I I want to help, but I can I can only help you um, if you tell me, right? You, you know, if you don't tell me, if you don't seek out help, um, then there's nothing really I can do then because I didn't know there was you know a situation where help was needed. Please be it, it's okay to ask for help as long as it's reasonable, right? Like you know I'm not I don't know I'm not gonna like transfer my my pension to you, right? But like you know. Put yourself in position as hard it is to admit that you're struggling, as hard it is to admit that you're not understanding something in class. If there's like, you know, some real life stuff that's gone on that's distracting you, work with me, we'll fix something out, right? It's not dumb to ask for help. It's not stupid to do it and so on, right? It's okay to ask for help. Get into a mindset where, you know, it is okay to reach out. I know that I am intimidating some people, I know that I am very direct and some people don't like that. They interpret that as being rude. Um, but it's something that I've noticed in a lot of my comments, right? This was a, a true statement from like one of the past comments. It's like, Dr. Powell seems very intimidating um, and then until you talk to him and then he's not. So I'm both like intimidating and not at the same time. It's okay to reach out. It's okay to talk. Please get in the habit of doing so so I can help you succeed, right? I'm gonna have a lot more respect for you. Um, if you are struggling and you need help, if you come out and you talk to me, rather than you like struggling, needing help, not doing work, not reading, and then not ever asking for help, right? Because at that point, I just assume you don't care. Um, show me that you care. Let's work on something together and kind of like normalize that kind of uh, aspect. Uh, I don't know what the intent of that video was, but you know, it, it is something, right? So uh, we'll go ahead and pause then and then uh, we'll move on to a few other things, right?